Welcome. This is going to be the third and final installment in our series about what the heck we mean when we say live your love story, because that is our motto that we have adopted, live your love story. And in the previous two episodes, we talked about how one is, one meaning we have of it is living your life as a romance. In other words, excitement and mystery surrounding love. And the other point was about what was the other point it's always about love the other point was it's always about love it always comes down to love (laughs) and the third is this episode that you're listening to and well we'll see you on the other side to let you know this third and final thing that we mean and think of when we say live your love story Welcome to the podcast where it's all about living your love story and making your life and world a story where love wins. My name is Sienna. And my name is Toast. We've been partners in life, love, and music since 2001. Welcome Welcome to to our our podcast. podcast. Welcome, everyone. We're bringing it home in this episode. Part three. Yes. Okay, so what does live your love story? Well, I wanted mean. to, I'll tell you what it means. It means not letting the bananas die and making something with them. Like banana bread. Yeah. That's what Sienna did earlier today. I did that today. I didn't want them to die. So I made some gluten free, grain free, almond flour, banana, and blueberry bread. It's cooling on our stove top. Obviously, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Yes. (laughs) She's hungry, folks. (laughs) Okay. Let's get this done. All right. Jeez. (laughs) See, I'm trying to be efficient. Efficient. (laughs) Rushing love. Toast, you are rushing love. Am I? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm kidding, you're not. Oh, don't apologize for being yourself. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Live your love story. How does it relate to real life? Because real life can be so just so messy. Yep. And uh, it's frustrating when you try to, it's frustrating when you're trying to make life fit into a neat box and, and, uh, you know, staying in the lines. And all the emotions. My gosh. Messy. Yeah. It can be hard. It can be a slog. It can be very frustrating. All the buttons to be pushed. It can be so not like a romantic feeling love story. Right. Um, So in this episode, we are focusing on the idea that life is an unfolding story. It happens uh, scene by scene, chapter by chapter. You don't know what's going to happen. It's not like you don't. It's not like a math problem mm-hmm. where boom, you get the whole thing and right. it's nice and neat, and the left side equals the right side, and you know it's a principle that you can just put down there, and hey, that solves everything. And it's not like baking, where you have a recipe right. and you just follow the recipe, right? And at the end, you have exactly what was promised, right? Nope. Nope. Life is an unfolding story. And sometimes you end up wondering, amidst the chaos, amidst the mess, amidst the emotions and the overthinking, and Netflix, and binge-watching things, and just too many salt and vinegar potato chips, you look up finally with crumbs. (laughs) <laughs> crumb <laughs> like potato chip bits on yes. your shirt and you wonder what your part in this all is what's the meaning of it all yeah yeah i definitely uh sometimes have gotten down on myself i think i struggle with that quite a bit actually i don't know if that's a common thing but I think just, it's a common thing. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Not to lighten your experience, but I think that. Okay. I think, and I think we go through waves of it, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's fair to say, because I think one of the reasons people might like go to see a motivational speaker or go to a workshop 
you know, that kind of thing is to feel better about themselves, right? To feel like, hey, I can, yeah. I can achieve significance. You want somehow. hope. You want to feel hopeful. Yeah. Well, the word I guess I'm that comes to my mind the most is significance. Like some, the reason I will feel down about myself sometimes is doubting the significance of my life. Yeah. You know. Um, I feel that, Yeah. I, I, I think it's compounded. Or it's, it's informed by the fact that we don't have kids. Yeah. You know, so people who have kids, it's like, well, obviously that's... And very significant. The, yeah. 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 You've molded you know. and helped raise a, a, a being. Yes. On the, for this planet that's to continue incredible. doing... Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Um, <clears throat> and also, you know, to be honest, it's like, well, I, I would like to have... A, by this point in my life have built something or created something that whether it's a business or a work of art or an organization or something, I mean, I know we're doing this podcast and I think that's, I do feel a sense of fulfillment and, and mm -hmm. significance in that. Yeah. Yeah. But that thing of always wanting to be assured that, you know, like, do you have an important part to play in yeah. the story of life or in the story of humanity? Uh, that's what I think of. And I think people... People might understand what you're saying, but I think when you hit midlife, mm -hmm. I think the midlife people definitely understand what we're saying. Yes. More because so. it yeah. has a, it has such a different tone to it mm. when you actually hit midlife. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess I want to share that the two things that I feel have helped me mm -hmm. or, um, so when I begin to doubt the significance of my life, you know, um, and the two things and the, or the two points of view that help me to recalibrate to the truth of what my actual part in this story is, is to zoom out or to zoom in. And by that, I mean, the, I guess the time scales of perspectives. So by zooming out, I'm referring to scientific facts about the timeline of our human species. So I'm talking about like zooming pretty far out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just recently learned that uh, scientists estimate that a species like human beings lasts usually about a million years. But because we humans have um, been able to adapt so we can live in so many different climates, we we work together in large groups to innovate solutions through technology. Like we're a really special species. So we can probably last way longer than a million years if we don't destroy ourselves first. And that's an important part. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the thing is, is that the human race right now is about 200,000 years old. Mm. So that's if you take a million years you know, as, okay, that's how long our species will last, then our species has already gone through only 20% mm -hmm. of its entire lifetime. Um, so we've got at least 80% more of our species lifetime left. And again, this is if we don't destroy ourselves first, so let's please to take, you know, continue to take care of climate change and stuff like that. Um, but just having that zoomed out perspective to realize that, wow, we we are living in a time where uh, the greatest achievements of our species are probably ahead of us. We are building still the foundation on mm -hmm. which future generations mm -hmm. will live. Um, I can't really explain it logically, but, but that helps you. But that, knowing, <laughs> having that perspective <laughs> gives me a sense of more calmness okay about the significance of my life and i think it's, it's i can feel how that could be yeah i think yeah. it's i think it has something to do with like a combination of don't take your life so seriously because mm -hmm. you're this small speck in this enormous timeline yeah along with you know you're you're significant you know it's that paradox again yeah okay but that's the zoom out and then the other point of view that helps me kind of recalibrate to the truth of my part in the story is to zoom in. 
when I was growing up, I came across a phrase that, that just hit me and it's always stayed with me. And the phrase is, you may not be able to change the world, but you can change the world for one person. And that's very powerful to me. Yeah. Um, so it's about dialing back my desire for significance to just focus on who my one tiny life comes in contact with. So recently, as an example, this is how small I'm talking about when I say zoom in. Recently, I realized, you know what? I want to improve my handwriting, just how it looks, you know, because I, I, I want to be able to convey through my handwriting just more of the depth and the fullness of my best intentions for people when I'm writing mm. a note, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, such a small thing. But that's, that's the zoom in part. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, oh, that's like super simple. <laughs> it's... And you can do it. It's, it's, it's humble. It's super small, yeah. but you know, but that's where I definitely notice. I get the feeling of it. It means something. Hmm. And that helps me. Yeah. Life is an unfolding story. Mm -hmm. Just a little, you know, like a close up on a movie, right? Yes. It's a close yes. up. The handwriting. There you go. So those are the things that kind of came to me. When I thought of that could be like, a song. What could be a song? Something about that your experience with the zooming in and the handwriting, hmm. and what you're wanting to convey hmm. in how you write to people you're writing to, or in what you're writing. And actually, you know, now that I think of it, also in writing to myself, like journals yeah. and just yes, brainstorming yes. ideas for songs and and expressing myself creatively like that. You know, but um. And they yeah. talk about like handwriting analysis. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, I don't know much about it at all, but if you change your handwriting, if it brings about change in some of a person's traits. I think there's a school of thought along those lines. Mm. I, it's true that when I see my handwriting and it's like messier than I intended. Yeah. It, it doesn't make me feel better about myself, <laughs> right? It's, and the opposite is true, right? So that's so that's funny. one aspect of it. But anyway, okay, life, an unfolding story. You can zoom out, have the big timeline, yes. can zoom in to that, you know, small little close up of what are you doing in this very instant? Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of the small things that can take up a big space. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other ways. Yeah. Other meanings of life is an unfolding story. Right. And the last episode I was talking about forgiveness and how I was at a different level to be able to receive more learnings from a certain situation. Mm -hmm. But until right. then, I couldn't receive that more. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that whole zoom in, zoom out piece, I think that's so important too. The way that I internalize that is more of more going back to balance. I think we talked about that in the first ser first part of this series. And I don't like balance. I love the drama and like eating the whole bag of whatever. Like it's just or binge watching the the whole thing. Like I love that. Okay. I don't okay. want to just go watch one episode a week, which is Toast's Roll, right? That's how you roll, right? Like, <laughs> well, can't we just watch hmm. one half hour episode a week? I'm like, no way. We're watching three. <laughs> I can't do it. But see, it, I think it's interesting that <laughs> the whole balance thing. But see, you're good at balance. I think you're, well, you're, I think you, you naturally have that internal discipline to balance yourself like it means it has more reward to be able to to exercise a sense of balance and for me I just don't like it but I think it's important and I am striving for that in, and it, in the things that I'm doing which is like how I I'm back to exercising how mm -hmm. I've you know don't eat a lot of sugar how I've uh am going um, less coffee mm -hmm. and no caffeine and all of that stuff. It's still a balance. 
Right. So and I, I think do... balance, like balance, it, it all depends on how far zoomed out you're talking about. Because if, if you're zeroing in on one day and mm-hmm. then, yeah, you binge watch something for six hours, it's like, yeah, that's <laughs> unbalanced. But if you're, if you're looking at an entire week, week or right. And yeah. then you, it's, you have six hours of watching. It's like, okay, that's yeah. kind of reasonable. You know, that's so true. It, it just it balances right. out over time. Okay. I think. Thanks. So I can... <laughs> Here's your permission slip. Let me so sign my it. One bag of chips. Sign it. You're now yeah. official. Yeah. But I, but I do think that so much of it has to do with balance. And for me, how I see all of this and, and my part in the story, in the greater story of life is, uh, what helps me is really taking into my whole being the phrase, this or something greater yet still. Mm. And we talked about this on a podcast before, but that phrase has been such a lifesaver for me in order to deal with the things that happen in life that make life messy, uh, where you're going, what, why is this happening? What's Mm. going on? You know, to really use that phrase, this or something greater yet still, and to understand that life doesn't happen to us. We are not victims of this life. Life is happening for us and through us. Yes. And I think that's yes. a big, that's a big difference, you know, in, and if you can have that and hold that framework, um, you know, and, and again, we talked about this on another episode where it's like the tools and things that help us we forget. <laughs> right. So it's like, whatever you got to do for yourself, whether you're, you're making a note in your iPhone or whatever it is, this note of these are, remember these tools, whatever it is, you know, to remember these phrases or things that really help you get back to the truth of life, truth, capital T, truth. And so this is something greater yet still. And I wanted to share a story that one of my teachers shared with me that has always really stayed with me because it really exemplifies um, how the things that happen seemingly to us that feel bad are not necessarily so, but we Mm -hmm. do need to remain open to Mm -hmm. the greater yet still. Mm -hmm. So there was this doctor who had a successful practice in LA, but she was being called to live closer to nature. And so with this calling, despite having this successful practice in a great large city, you know, she decided to follow it. And so she followed this calling and sold her practice. And she was in the middle of buying a house in Colorado. And then the deal fell through. And This is where many of us, if not all of us, would think, oh, my God, I shouldn't have sold my practice. Oh, my God, what was this? What was I thinking? I should have just stayed Mm -hmm. where I was. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, what have I done? What have I done with my life? What a mistake I made. This was a a sign. I'm not supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. So, again, she had all of those same thoughts, and she got to a place of calm and went, okay, let me remember what I know. And what she felt she knew is that life is happening for her and through her and that there was actually intelligence in this thing that was seemingly wrong Mm -hmm. which was oh my god the deal fell through a seemingly bad thing so anyway she got to a place of calm and her intuitive sense um she just heard in her mind she heard call susan her inner yoda Yes. And this is when she's calm now. She's not in this flurried, oh my God, I have to fix this. She was calm. Mm. And I think that is the best time when we can actually hear oh, yeah. our intuitive side, right? Yeah. Because you cannot do it in when you're panicked. Yeah. When I'm like in in a panic state. Yeah. Right? It doesn't even have to be outright panic. Yeah. It's just like worry, concern. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I try to hear and listen for guidance and mm-hmm. stuff. Even if I hear something, mm-hmm. I can't trust it. Right. Because I'm just making it up. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, she heard call Susan and luckily for her, she only knew one Susan. (laughs) She was like, oh, okay. I went to school with, I went to medical school with a Susan. And so she called her and she said, hi, Susan, you know, do you remember me? And she goes, yeah, of course I remember you. She goes, I don't know why I'm calling you, but this morning you just popped into my head. And so I thought I'd give you a call and see how you're doing. Mm. And Susan said, oh my gosh, we're actually interviewing for uh, to fill our staff here. We need another doctor. 
would you be interested in interviewing? And so even though this woman never thought to live in Santa Barbara, where this uh, practice is, Susan, yeah, Susan where lives Susan in Santa Barbara is, which is closer to nature right, than L.A., right? Um, she thought, okay, I'm going to follow these breadcrumbs. I'm going to follow these things that are being revealed to me one by one. I'm just going to follow it. So she went for the interview. And as soon as she stepped through the doors, right above the reception desk, unfortunately, I don't remember the quote, but right above the desk, there was a um, picture with this beautiful quote. And it meant so much for this woman because this quote was an important quote for her. And um, so as soon as she saw that, she just exhaled. Her shoulders fell. She was just, oh, I'm in the right place. Hmm. And long story short, she got hired, moved to Santa Barbara, bought a beautiful home there. And three months later, she met the love of her life. And they got married. And having love and a partner in her life was also something she really wanted. Mm -hmm. So her first thing was, I want to live closer to nature, but I also want a partner. But her focus was on, I, I want to move closer to nature. But she was open to the greater yet still. This or something greater yet still. Mm -hmm. Could she have had a practice and lived in Colorado? Of course. Could she have had a good life? Probably, why not, right? Mm -hmm. But the greater yet still, like when we are open to receiving that more mm -hmm. and not capping what we think, you know? Or not thinking, you know, there's there's definitely hubris in thinking that we, in our finite perspective, no. and limited, yeah, limited yes. visibility yes. on life, yes. know what is best for right. us. Because there right? is like, a value. Oh, my place is in Colorado. I'm going to just look yeah. for another house this is in it. Colorado. Right. But we cut ourselves off. So I think that, you know, when we're assessing, okay, what's my part in this greater story of life? I think it is important to remember that we don't have that whole vantage point. But if we're open to it, we can see the breadcrumbs. Just the next step. The next step. And that's all we need to see. But I think as human beings, we want to know where we're going to end up. We want to know how the story ends. Mm -hmm. And if we're willing to live a different way, I think we'll be amazed at mm. what's waiting for us. And you know that it's so neat that you put it that way because that idea of waiting to see mm -hmm. um, that to me perfectly circles back and dovetails with how we started this series of life being a great romance with the mystery and mm. the excitement yes. and it's a relationship yes. mm -hmm. yeah yeah I love that Ah, so thank you so much, everyone, for listening to our three-part series. If you have a question or issue you'd like us to address in a future episode, feel free to contact us. You can email us at info at cnntoast.com or head over to our website, cnntoast.com, and hit the contact button, and you can reach out to us. And until next time, this is Sienna, and this is Toast, as always, inviting you to live your love story.